What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 151 of the Cheesy Controller Podcast. I'm your host, Anton LaFlat. Joining me, as always, we have the mayor of Stardew Valley, Chris Montalbano. What's up, everybody? We got the most degenerate squid in the feet, Jalen Roberts. Back at it again. And we got the Ray Trace do rag, Madrid Devon. There are no surprises. We got a jam-packed episode for you guys this week. We're going to be talking about our Game of the Year 2021. We're finally doing that episode. And we're going to talk about Microsoft buying Activision. So, you know, Game of the Year is literally over an hour of us talking about our favorite games of 2021. So, yeah, maybe we'll convince you to play one of them. Yeah, it's super jam-packed. Okay, so it's game of the year time here in the world of cheese, and 2021 was a weird year, Mm -hmm. but when we went back, I did the same thing I usually do, game of the year time. I went, opened up my PlayStation profiles, took out my Switch, oh shit, let me not knock over a beer onto my (laughs) keyboard, but... uh, yeah, I got out Party my Switch. Foul. Right. <laughs> podcast <laughs> foul. <laughs> That's the ultimate podcast file. Mm-hmm. Did uh, you say file? <laughs> you know, there. <laughs> that's like a large chunk of multiple hard drives on my computer. Just podcast files. But, um. <laughs> Yeah, I did the same thing I do every year, Game of the Year time. But brought up my PSN profiles page, brought up my Switch. Uh, I actually didn't bring up Steam, and I'm afraid to because it might mess up the stream. But I'm aware of what I played on Steam this year. One of my games, one of my top five is going to be... I played it entirely on Steam. So Nice. Good, good. So we all have a top five. We have a backlog award, yeah. which is a game that didn't Explain come out. Rules. So yeah, the rules are we can try and come to a consensus if we get there and decide to, you know, but we all have our top five games. Yeah. Um, and then we have an honorable mention. Just mm-hmm. one. I'm going to shout out a bunch of games just because looking scrolling through 2021 and the things so many random free things came out Mm -hmm. and a bunch of games came out that i didn't play enough of because i've been addicted to 14 so but you know i surprisingly actually beat a few games so we'll get into this uh So we have our Backlog Award, which is a game that didn't come out in 2021. Then we have our Top 5 of 2021. And I mean... The Honorable Mention, which just is a shout-out to a game that came out in 2021. But, like, didn't make it on the Top 5. I guess so, like, number 6, maybe? Yeah, but, you know... Pretty much. Pretty much. Well, no, my Honorable Mention is not my number 6 game. It's just a game I really want to shout out. I feel like deserves some okay. attention. You know, that's fair. It's it's your utility slot. You know, you can use it for the game that just doesn't quite fit the criteria of your list. Yeah. But you want to talk about it. So my number five for 2021, I'll start it off. Uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Because I didn't beat it. I can't put it up there. I didn't beat it. I'm just happy but, it's on the list. Yeah, I really respect it and what it did. Like, as a PS5 exclusive game, I feel like it kind of, for it, outside of Demon Souls, it being the first, and I mean, guess Returnal kind of counts now. It counts the same way Demon Souls counts, but uh, for it to be the first, like, first party post-launch game Mm -hmm. it really shows the power of the system and it's exclusive which even Horizon which is the next big one and God of War Mm -hmm. both of those are cross-gen so Mm -hmm. Ratchet and Clank 
and while developers were on Twitter talking about how they could have technically gotten it to run on a PS3, it'd run at like 20 frames per second at like <laughs> below PS4? 720p. No, PS3. On PS3. Yeah. Wait, ripped apart? Yes. There was... Why? Yeah, like because I mean, and it wouldn't have necessarily like the instantaneous loading, but te- they're like the game could have technically been a cross gen game. Huh. Huh. That's actually yeah, so, super interesting. Ratchet and Clank, I guess. My number five, uh, Chris, what's yours? Coming in number five, I got Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I mean, it's the first time I ever played this. Uh, generation anyway so it, all of it was new to me nice. and I thought it was a very solid Pokemon with a pretty decent Pokemon story compared to the rest of them out there uh, yeah it was I mean fucking Pokemon of that generation were really good the yeah. legendaries were pretty Gen cool Gen 4 slaps Gen 4 does slap uh, the rival kind of like is extreme and uh, it has some ADHD they really need to work out. But the um, Pokemon Peta. Yeah. What, a real fun name? villain. It's not Wally. In? In? Wasn't his name in? Wasn't Poke Peta in? No. The, the rival the was. Uh, I don't even remember. In was My point is, he he's off of fucking Bean. Uh, yeah. Like <laughs> the entire game. You are literally about to face the time po- god Pokemon, and he just dips. Like, there's something more important out Shit, there man, in the world. Shit, man, I left my oven on. <laughs> right. Uh, like, so, yeah. <laughs> this is a, a, definitely a Bikes fun game. Home from another dimension. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Brilliant Diamond, my number five. Solid Pokemon. Where do you rate it in your Pokemon compendium? Okay, so... Since this is your first time with Gen 4. For nostalgia's sake, I'll give... Johto is always going to be my number one. And then Gen 3. And then Gen 1. And then... uh, Yeah, I would give Gen 4 the next one on the list. Number 4. Number 4. And then (laughs) Sun and Moon was... 5? Yeah. Well, that's Gen 7. Yeah, but I didn't play Black and White. That's Gen 5. Mm-hmm. And then uh, that's because you know there's X other and colors. Y Chris. is Gen mm-hmm. six. <laughs> and then oh yeah, why I didn't play X or Y? <laughs> um, and although I heard those were like really good stories too. Eh. Eh. I just didn't have like I was broke eh. and didn't could not afford a DS or a 3DS when those games we're came out. We're at the age range where those are the games that are the gaps. In our Pokemon play, I played X version before my 3DS. Like I was, I played and Y. Stole my 3DS, but yeah, I played yeah. some of X. Would y'all cape for either one of those? Would I? What? I'm gonna tell you. This? Here's my feelings on X and Y. If I was a parent, I would love that game significantly more than I did. Right. That is the perfect game to give to a small child to introduce them in the Pokemon. Yeah, that's kind of like like the game's easier. Like you get like your you have type advantage against your base rival in this in that game. That's fucking ridiculous. They pick the other Pokemon. They're like, you know, and what? you get two starters. I'm you get this. the Gen Seven starters or the Gen Six starters, and you get a Gen One starter. Yeah. Like That's it has cool. that right mix of like new sensibilities and a little bit of nostalgia. Mm-hmm. And this is the and this is the game with the Pokemon War in it. <laughs> Yeah. Like, this is where the timeline splits. Oh, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. I think, sh- I thought sh- Sword, Sword, Sword and Shield were, uh, was a pretty good Pokemon game. I think that, I mean, it was just the first one that I came back to after literally dropping off in Gen 3. <laughs> so. so, yeah, coming back, you know, five generations later. I was like, yeah, why not? And, I mean, I played Let's Go, but Let's Go doesn't necessarily count. I mean, it's a Gen 1 game. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a Gen 1 I game. I gave that one to my niece after I finished it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As you should. So, Gen 1. I literally Merry did Christmas. everything I possibly could. I beat all the rivals between red and green and 
blue and beat the Elite Four twice. Yeah. Once. But yeah, enough about Pokemon. Yeah, Jalen, what's your number five? My number five is the Mass Effect Legendary Collection, which I didn't realize came out in early 2021, but I played the... I beat... I didn't finish Mass Effect 3, but I beat 1 and 2. Damn. That is crazy. It was a good time. Hell yeah. If it's good uh, enough to make you play Andromeda. Right. You gotta be right. <laughs> and also, uh, like, I just wanted, like, a nice space opera of a storyline. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I want to go around, be this competent badass, be like, yeah. I'm Shepard. I got half of the half of the council species on DTF. I got my pistol on my hip, and I'm about to save the you world. And it's on, late. On what? You heard is me. That a, is that is that a type of um, like a, a special tactic, a team fight tactic that you have to use? Yes, yeah. it's a special. That, it's, it's a special team building exercise where you build. That's how you get the crew <laughs> strong enough to defeat the collectors. Mm-hmm. By like registering them for DTF training. Yeah, it's a new it's a new it's a, also a new cryptocurrency. <laughs> oh, DTF coin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's <laughs> it only gets worse. It only gets worse the more you think about it. Mm-hmm. This episode's gonna be three days long. Madrid with your number now you five. got now you got receipts. I I fucking hope so. Oh no fuck God that would damn. just make it Gwent. That literally would just make it Gwent. Fuck. Fuck, that just makes it Gwent. (laughs) You know what's up. When you accidentally reinvent Gwent. (laughs) But make it horny. No. My number five. Oh, wait. Madrid, you didn't play The Witcher 3, did you? Is it horny? I mean, that game. I played enough of it. No, to get get some of those cards, you have to smash. (laughs) If you don't smash them, you don't get their card. That's amazing. That's all I have yeah. to say. That's just amazing. Yeah. So literally, it's it's just Gwen. You make up. You play a card nice. game with the cards of the people you sleep with. I need that Yu-Gi-Oh expansion. <laughs> <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh Master Fuka. <laughs> well, yeah, with Is that your what the kids are calling five. it these days, <laughs> Dooley? I meant something else in my day. Yeah. Dual kinks. <laughs> no. That's no. when you have two kinks in your okay, And they so have to do it for five, <laughs> My number five game of the year is actually going to be a boyfriend dungeon, since that was like the only indie I played. And I, from what I played of it, I, I fucked with it. You know, mm-hmm. simple concept, yeah. date weapons. You go into dungeons with weapons, um, and it's like a date. Mm-hmm. You know, there's 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 a fuck boy, there's a there's a hot art chick, um, there is a toxic d bag, <laughs> and there's a stalker mechanic, which is a little triggering, but also you know it it asks is like hey you know there's this thing you know do you want to participate in it? And I'm like yeah give me the full experience and that nigga be blowing your fucking shit up. <laughs> Like, dude, leave me alone. You also have your choice of like non romantic friendships, so you can just like make friends. Yeah. 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 It is a, you can date. You can pretty much date whoever. Yeah. It is a, it's definitely cool. a, it's cool. It was a fun game. I turned out I checked out a little bit of it when it first came out. Yeah. I want to get back to it, but my switch has become my SMT five machine, so As it should. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's my number five. Number. I recommend checking it out. Number four for me is Knockout City, because nice. Knockout City took the group by storm. It was a movie. Can I can I just piggyback and say that's also my number four? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just go ahead and get that and play that card, <laughs> so we don't have to circle back around. Right. Yeah. Knockout City. It kind of took the world by storm. The fact that it. It's on Game Pass and was free on PlayStation Plus. Yo, like, yo, no that excuse. shit, that shit, 
That shit hit like something Reagan introduced, allegedly. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> straight oh, straight no. up. No. It, it, yo, it, 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 had, it definitely had the... What? It, it, it birthed the waffle. Mm. Yeah. That's when you like lob a pass and it hits, the, it beams them right in the head. But it goes kind of slow, so it's like if you toss the waffle. <laughs> what was the other like move? You ever... oh, fuck. There was another move that you getting had... cream, the... getting cream, yeah. getting cream, getting creamed is just getting beamed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, but straight there's in the creaming, eye this time. There's creaming and beaming and bussing. Bussing, bussing creaming, bussing. beaming and bussing. Huh? <laughs> yeah, Knockout City, Knockout City's fun. Like they, like that's that's more the type of shit that I want to see from EA. The game's fun, mm-hmm. you know. You, sure, you buy in at first, but like you know, they give you good cosmetics. They reward you for playing. The battle um, pass is free. I don't know if it's still free. The battle pass is, f- yeah, who knows? <laughs> but they seem to be like giving it content fairly regularly. Yeah, it's having seasons um, and all. Everybody that. who plays is still sweat is super sweaty though, so that's kind of a thing to be worried about. <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It has the rocket league. It has the every games as a service, like low entry cost game problem. It's yeah. like, cause Rocket League, bef- even before it was free, it was like it was free on PlayStation Plus at launch, and then it was like twenty bucks. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, competitive games have free. what I like to call the distillation problem, where it's like once the novelty factor. Uh, wears off you start getting to the point where like the only people still playing are at least competent at the game yeah and when your servers are only filled where your skill floor for your player base is now competent because all the scrubs have stopped playing because the novelty wore off game starts to feel quite sweaty yeah and that's when the toxic seeps in but i think knockout city because being on Game Pass and being a game that like is kind of kid friendly, I feel like you could still show up in some lobbies and beat the shit out of some kids with some dodgeballs. So, so yeah, yeah, that could be fun. You know, yeah. I'd say if you haven't given the, it a try, the drip is also a, yeah, the drip. Oh, the drip is also the, oof, cosmetics surprisingly in fucking <laughs> clean. Surprisingly fucking clean. That's good. I definitely fuck with that. So, yeah, it's fun. All right. They do a lot of cool shit, though. So, shouts out to Knockout City. Yeah. Chris, what's your number four? Uh, my number four is coming in at Halo Infinite. Oof. I didn't get enough time. I didn't put enough time into the campaign, but I put it a little bit in. But the amount of time playing multiplayer with you guys and even just solo, just taking you back to that old nostalgia of just fucking running some Halo. Halo's it, it my can't. number three. Yeah, I mean, just, I just because of the multiplayer, like it's that's good. Kind of, I mean, Ratchet I, I and mean, Clank's the only single player game on my top five. And well, Ratchet and Clank, not to spoil anything, is just uh, it's one step above this one, just because I beat it all the way through. So it's like I beat one campaign just, all the way through. I didn't beat this one, so that's why. Yeah. I mean, I haven't played Halo's campaign yet, but Halo just the the multiplayer, the events, yeah, being able to play with different groups of friends, like the I hopped on a rupee stream, huh? The cosmetics are sick. Yeah, the cosmetics are fucking awesome, and the season one is Reach. Mm. It's a slam dunk for me. That's why, like, it's number three on my list. And it can only be beat by two of my, like, best games. But, yeah. So, number four for you is Halo. Mm-hmm. Number three for me is Halo. Jalen, what's your number four? My number four is Resident Evil 8. Nice. Mm. Uh, I did not finish the game because fuck the dollhouse. Because fuck the dollhouse. And I, that, that set, that, I find that, that pleasing. Fuck under. that dollhouse. Fuck it. Just, just fuck that dollhouse. Just is it not in your top five, Chris? <laughs> yeah, it's in my top five. Oh no, it's that, that definitely that last conversation with Chris is, is one of those. We're not going to say anything just so we don't spoil the rest of our list, right? 
I feel like, you know, if we're piggybacking, I guess... I guess one space is fair. So, yeah, one, I mean, like, we were... I mean, we Ratchet and Clank is my same, number three. The same rank. <laughs> yeah, but my number... My number four is Resident Evil, Red, bleh, Resident Evil 8. Uh... I've always leaned towards more the scarier Resident Evil. Like I want the the pre four style, I guess. Yeah, you want like where the, you know it's a little bit more resource management. You know, try not to die. I mean, but on that same notion, I love how fucking stupid Resident Evil still is because that game is fucking stupid. Yeah, every decision in that game is like you, you y'all pick the worst way of handling everything. Yeah, but I wouldn't be on this adventure if y'all could make decent decisions, so I'm with it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, Resident Evil 8's great. I'm going to definitely get into more information right. on that. So we know Madrid's number four is Knockout City, same as mine. We know my Knockout number City, three baby. is Halo. So, Chris, what's your number three? Ratchet and Clank. Okay. And I, like I said before, Ratchet and Clank was just because I... Beat the campaign. That's why I put it over Halo. But uh, all in all, Insomniac came out with a fucking banger ass Ratchet and Clank game that made me feel. I mean, next gen, and you felt some next gen in it, and that's what made it different and kept it fresh. But also, it, uh, in the core of it, was a solid Ratchet and Clank game. That the boys were back. Ray tracing mode is when I hopped into. Uh... What's the other one? Spider-Man Remastered. I had to go performance RT because mm-hmm. between Miles Morales, Ratchet and Clank, and Spider-Man Remastered, for me, it's like, run the game at 60 frames per second and give me ray tracing. Like, yeah. I'm cool with the variable kind of resolution, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it still looks still great. Look good. Right, like, yeah, that's Even the thing. in <laughs> high performance, it was still looking good. So, yeah, that game was just. If you have a PS5, it I feel like play that game. Yeah, Rise and Clank right now is the most must play PS5 game. I mean, if you've ever played, and I'm not even a Rise and Clank fan. That's the thing. (laughs) And if you are a Rise and Clank fan, the boys are back, and they're just as wholesome as ever. But also, you get two new characters who have problems. The girls are here. I'd die for real. We got the boys and we got yes. the girls. The boys and the girls, and they're just like all in all. It's just fantastic. Yeah. The Lombaxes. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> so, Jalen, you're number three. My number three is Near Replicant. Mm-hmm. Sad boy. Pain Incarnate. Just, <laughs> uh, Like, if, look, if you, if you listen to this podcast and you're not a Taro cultist by now, go play Near Automata. Go play near a replicant. I'm Just play Sino Alice. I want to shout out Voice Thank of you, Cards, the Isle Dragon Roars, as another 2021 Yoko Taro game. <laughs> and I just want to shout it out. You know, I enjoyed what I played. Is that the card game you talked about? Huh? Yeah, the card the, game. Okay. Yeah. An, so, yeah. We got a remake of a Yoko Taro game and a new Yoko Taro game in 2020. Didn't the mobile game come out too? Uh, Not Sino Alice, uh, Incarnation. Yeah, near reincarnation. Near reincarnation. Yeah. Boy's eating this year. I mean, hey, it's like he said, he'll do anything for money. And we'll give him money for anything he does. (laughs) I love it. All right. Soundtrack, amazing. Game. The game plays fun. The game runs really well. The art. The fucking art. Just. The music, the art, like, the story. It's such a fucking vibe. I'm not saying what type of vibe it is, but it is. There is a vibe. (laughs) (laughs) Can't promise you won't cry, but, you know. Mm -hmm. I assure you will cry. you feel something? (laughs) Oh, no, you will. If you don't, it's because you don't have feelings. And you should probably get that checked out. Mm-hmm. Fucking sociopath. Probably. All right. Madrid, your number three. My number three is actually, let me go check. Metroid Dread. Woo! 
Good old Metroid. <laughs> yeah, that shit's like they really did a, like a great job with this game. Like the cutscenes are fucking fire. Um, just like that that little bit of fear that you that dread that you feel when you're just walking in that, like that isolated space and you hear that Emmy coming for you mm-hmm. and you're looking at the layout of the map. It's like, bro, I don't know how the fuck I'm supposed to get out of here without that shit catching me. And so like your only option is to get the timing just right on that Emmy parry. <laughs> Or, you know, that's something you got that fucking beam on you and you about to blast the ass. Right. <laughs> it, and this is also also something else I love about that is that you're vulnerable and you're in danger, but you're not weak. You yeah. learn that parry, you will just start backhanding them left and right. It's hilarious. That but is. you have to learn that parry. It's a nice contrast. You have to learn that parry. And that shit is a bitch and a half. Yeah, like even with that parry, you're still in a whole lot of danger. You're still vulnerable to him, but it's like... You're saying it's Ron. Yeah. You got this. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you, you definitely got the pieces. And it's it seems like it's open enough to where you can kind of go to different areas to figure out, you know, like, you know, typical Metroid style, you know, getting your upgrades, doing your thing, fighting bosses. I think I'll probably be like four or so bosses, like two or three Emmys. <clears throat> so I got, you know, I did a little, a little something, something in it. But I, I, I would like to get back to that game. Mm-hmm. But, you know, certain things are eating all my time. Right. <laughs> but yeah, Metroid Dread, I do. It. I consu- drinking it. <laughs> Dee Dee. But yeah, um, definitely go check this game out if you're a Metroidvania fan. If you've played any of the recent, like, Rogue Lights and shit like that, definitely give this one a try. Yeah, I mean, it's the it Metroid in Metroidvania. You know, it mm-hmm. it got that shit for a reason. And I feel like this is a good, like, return to form to the franchise. All right, so my number two. And going into 2021, I would have thought this would have been my number one. But it was held back by the Switch. And it was held back by, in comparison to World, the lack of, like, post-release content. <laughs> Because in comparison to other Monster Hunters, it's kind of on par, but World just, like... Yeah. I forgot this game was a thing until about, like, one cat... Like, one... Round number four. I was like, oh, shit, that came out this year. Yep. <laughs> it's not on my list, though, because... It just it's didn't on have my that, list, because, you know... That hook in it. Uh, oh, I played, like... Did I play a hundred hours of it? Let's let's check the good old switcheroo. Uh, we're talking about Rise, right? Yeah, Monster yep. Hunter Rise is the game we're talking about. I uh, will say I yeah, don't. We've been cryptic. I I don't oh, know I if he actually said Rise. I played 140 hours of Rise, so <laughs> yeah, I played 140 hours of Monster Hunter Rise Damn. on my Switch, and. Rise enjoyed the good, hell out of it. Like, Rise even, was a good little time. I think that Rise was the one that I actually fought more monsters than I ever did in World. Yeah, because Rise streamlined, like, that was one of the things when we were doing squad sessions we were talking about, just how much more approachable it is than World, and definitely Gen U, because we had played collectively, like, tens of thousands of hours of world between everybody when we went to GU and GU was just kind of like all all of us had a very steep learning curve with it but by the time we picked it up and realized like all the stuff around the hunting like we had our hunt (laughs) we got our hunt on in that game Mm -hmm. but yeah so Rise is my number two uh I'm contemplating every day this PC version. I really might just switch over to PC because 30 frames per second on the Switch. I remember one time uh, I had convinced Radic to play Fortnite with me. And so I went from playing Fortnite on PS5 and he was playing on PS4. And both games are running at 60 frames per second. And then we go and play Monster Hunter Rise on Switch and we are like, yo, this is unplayable this is super bad <laughs> it is <laughs> it was one of those i put 80 hours in the rise 80 hours <laughs> yeah it's not even on my list 
but that's probably like my third most played Switch game, but behind Smash Brothers Ultimate and Fire Emblem Three Houses. Let me see, cause hmm. I have at two twenty five and one fifty respectively. Respectively. So my number one is Smash Ultimate. My number two is Rise. My number three is Pokemon Sword. Number four is Breath of the Wild. Number five is Gen Ultimate. And then it's Splatoon hmm. 2. If you nasty. <laughs> <laughs> that ketchup versus mayo Splatfest will live on in my nightmares. <laughs> Um, you know, I had a joke, but I'm I'm going to keep it. <laughs> That's okay. It's yeah. My number two is Rise. <laughs> uh, we started the Squad Sessions podcast specifically because of that game. Uh, I think I'm going to go to PC for Sunbreak because Sunbreak is one of my most anticipated things in 2022. It's the That's Master nice. Rank expansion. And I, I know I'm going to be playing with maybe one other person, but I think mm-hmm. I'm going to have to play it on PC. Cause just because of how much Halo's had me playing games on my PC. Mm-hmm. Good. Like, I have yeah, my Xbox controller in, like, a usable setup. Like, it's at a moment's notice I can just grab it and play, and I mean, I'm totally down PC. to run Why through. Why don't you use it? Huh? You got a decent PC, you got to use it. I mean, for me, like, gaming on PC was just kind of always an inconvenient thing, and Halo made me make it convenient. So, Mm -hmm. now, I mean, I played a lot of World on PC. I beat all of Base World, and I think the majority of Iceborne, if not all of Iceborne. Yeah. By myself on PC, so. That's cool. Yeah, Rise. I wish it had cross save or cross progression or cross anything. Because if it had cross play, I'd just start over on PC and just play with everybody on Switch on PC. Or if it had cross save, I'd transfer my save from my Switch to my PC, play there, and then mm-hmm. transfer it back to my Switch to play with other people. Yeah. But it has neither, sadly. All right. Yeah. Chris, what's your number like two? That. We're we're in the upper echelon now. We're we're we up are. there. Uh, my number two, and this is not to take any way anything away from my number two. My number two and my number one were pretty much neck and neck. Um, but In Walker is my number two, and In Walker. I will say my one and two are light years ahead of what the other ones are. <laughs> if you could make a graph, it would be huge. Um, <laughs> I kind of just put our account as my like distinguisher yeah. of my well, top. I, I I couldn't do that with my number one because it's not that long, but it's the emotional things that it distilled in the me. soul yes. resonance. That's what In Walker did. It made me feel um, alive. Um, it yeah, In Walker did a lot. For my soul, and it's a beautiful, beautiful game. It's, beautiful it's game. Final Fantasy fourteen this year. Like I really good. think Final Fantasy might be fourteen might be one of my games of this generation. Like if I could go ahead and spoil things, uh, maybe no, I'll do that later. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I was kidding. I won't. I'm not going to do that. Maybe we'll do that later. Oh, come through this camera, I, I, you, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, in Madrid. Walker, so I think you're it. like I can't talk about almost caught anymore. up to Jalen in fourteen. I thought yeah. Jalen beat Shadow. Probably. I mean, I have not really played since I rolled credits on Shadowbringers. Yeah. Well, Madrid. Oh, I'm about on the way to Shadowbringers. So we're not that close. Okay, so you're still in Stormblood, technically. Mm-hmm. Post-game. Post-game, okay. So okay. we're literally just in post games, post-games of two different expansions. I'm with it. Okay. So Jalen, what's your number two? What have My you number two. 
It was a it was a fight between these two games, but yeah, my number a- two is Halo Infinite. Nice. Yeah, uh, I played a lot of the story. I'm enjoying it. Uh, it's a little bit of a walk back just because of how disastrous five is, but mm-hmm. I'm excited to see where the Halo story goes on from here. Is it like and the multiplayer is fun? Is it like five isn't canon or like no five no? It still is... takes directly after five. Like all of five is still canon, yeah. but it's like well, this doesn't they take had... place directly after five. No, yes, like... it does. Like no, yes, yes, it. Well, not technically, but also yes, it does. Because funny enough, the final cutscene of the storyline of Halo Five, if you shift the camera about thirty degrees to the left, you'll have the opening cinematic of Infinite. Oh. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. But it's 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 nice. The writing's a little bit better. It's an improvement. The multiplayer's fun. Multiplayer is god tier. Multiplayer is good enough that it is in my top five with not playing any of the campaign whatsoever. Right. Yep. And they also uh they're working on the shop, so they're lowering the price of certain things and they're decoupling some of their items from bundles. So you're able to get them separate and they're working on making it so you can earn premium currency by playing the game nice cool that's actually that's really, really cool. good yeah fucking halo it's hitting yeah the fact that it's only improved since it came out and w- it was good when it came out and it's only improved mm-hmm. pretty much like month over month it's like leagues better than it was I mean and we still we still haven't gotten um, the co-op campaign yet. It, there are theories out. that that's going to be something totally separate. Really? Because it's it seems like it's going to be a more linear thing, and that's part of the reason it was delayed. Well, that could make sense. But, but like either li- way, still more to come. Yeah. And Forge is still coming. There's more. They need more multiplayer maps desperately, but I know that multiplayer maps take time, and so I'm yeah. I'm totally. Lying. Heck, I'll I'll tell you this right now. Some of those areas, some of those uh, arenas that you have to fight in for the story mode, I'm like, these are multiplayer maps that you just haven't implemented yet. Okay. Like I that. Know. Like one of the first areas you're in, in in the story mode. Like that is a map. That is a straight up map. Tight. I mean, I believe you. And then just throw in, you can throw in some old ones. Yes. Give me some Reach maps. Yeah. That is the one thing, like, I would take. There are some Reach maps that would be. I, if we're going to be 100 here, if we're going to talk about maps, we need some of them ODST maps. Them ODST maps were something special. They did actually hit. I mean, Halo maps. I mean, remember, hit. ODST was a map pack. Yeah. Let's be 100 here. It's a map pack with a storyline. Not sure. <laughs> it's true. All right. So, Madrid, your number two. My number two is about two groups of two people <laughs> that are similar <laughs> because they're from the multiverse. So, my number two is going to be Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Ba, ba, yeah. Ba, ba. Yeah. My first PlayStation 5 game that I played all the way through. Um, brand new game to me, you know, not like Hades. Um, so that I think that was really dope. Mm-hmm. I do really f- like that should look good. You know, I'm on my 4K monitor. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes, Get sir. Ray tracing looking sexy at now. You flip it between different dimensions and shit. Like, and that final boss fight, that shit's cool. That shit was so good. Like, they take all those pieces and some of those, um, like those set pieces when they have you just like fucking um, tree surfing, you know, like Tarzan. Yeah. <laughs> that shit is cool. That shit is cool as hell. Mm-hmm. And then like you know, feeling the different uh, vibrations with the haptics on the controller, and like the, the adaptive triggers that, like, are really good yeah. in that game. Like the yes. fact that you like, really felt it with gun each gun differently. Yeah, like they 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 did a really good job, like taking advantage of like yeah, what the PS5 had to offer. It's a so I, I think that is another reason. It's a solid showcase for the PS5. Solid showcase, and like this and Ratchet and Clank 2016 were like the only ones. Was it 2016? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so those are the only ones I've really played, um, and I like this one better. So I'm like, oh, well, this is the best Ratchet and Clank game that I've played. This is my favorite Ratchet and Clank game, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, like, Kit and Rivet, I, well, I would murder for them. <laughs> they are just... You know, just to make sure that they're okay. Yeah, exactly. They do such a so, good job of making you love these new characters so fucking fast. That are the, right, their char- right. the character writing in this was good. Right. And, and even, like, the universal, like, opposites, like... Uh, Captain Quantum. Oh yeah, kind of compared to Captain Quark. Yeah, <laughs> like one of them sucks, the other one's like, oh, he's a he's a halfway decent guy. Yeah, he's fucking fantastic. <laughs> he actually just wants to right. be a hero and be super wholesome. Like I feel like that's what the key word to this whole game was. Just yeah. like, I just want to be a wholesome hero and live life peacefully. And I I do believe that he's black. <laughs> he is. <laughs> they made Captain Quark uh, a person of color. And that's cool. And okay. Yeah. So I, I definitely, if you got a PS5, this is like one of five PS5 games. So go check that one out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah all right. We, I we have about 85 to sit here like this PS5 shit games. Man, there ain't no goddamn PS5 games. That you can so only I want you, play as on a P, PS5. As a, as a P as a PS five nigga, I'm letting you know that if I did not if I was not playing Final Fantasy fourteen pretty much exclusively, I would feel a little burned. That that's fair. I mean I literally just uh, turn on but, my PS five <laughs> to get into party chat. I bought this to play play <laughs> to play Final Fantasy fourteen exclusively with the PS five version, so I am happy. Yeah. <laughs> Just things to keep in mind. Food for thought. But definitely get Ratchet and Clank a rest of the Definitely. It's a short enough game. You can beat it. You can get those dopamine. You you do a lot of puzzles and shit that make you feel good. Yeah. It's like, ah, I did that. I, I, I'm i accomplished. I knocked that shit out, bro. It's just a, a right. grand old time. So to my number one. My number one game. 2021. One. Final Fantasy no, fourteen no and Walker. <laughs> no surprises at all. I'm not. I'm not surprised at all. Right. I mean, if you I, want to I, state I, start, your case. I picked it up in Final Fantasy February, and I was like, you know, I'll see where this takes me. That was me. almost a year ago. Right, almost a yeah, year seriously. ago. And the crazy part is, I've probably put a solid thirty days of playtime, so I've put a month in a year. <laughs> So, I don't know if that's commendable or like <laughs> <laughs> or hey commitable, you know. <laughs> it's a great game. Like yeah. I told you, Chris, my part one of my New Year's resolutions was I definitely didn't stick to the other one, which was draw more. I d- I did draw, but I, I didn't yeah. improve in drawing any whatsoever. Um, you drew, but it wasn't more. Right. I mean, I, t- I hadn't did you drawn draw, any in 2020. Did you draw Monster Cardo? Draw! Yeah, my number one is Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Uh, uh, no. Uh, and Walker. It came out 24 hours ago. <laughs> it was it that pot even... of greed. It allowed him to draw two cards. I'm always drawing I'm two cards if you know what I mean. Dick. <laughs> pot of Glicks? <laughs> but uh yeah this is this is the glizzy pot <laughs> exclusive pot of glizzy of allows me to draw two glizzies <laughs> you pull out a double barrel shaboy <laughs> <laughs> no condiments right i at least need chili and or cheese for me to down so more than one. Okay, Sonic. Just cheese? Huh? Mm-hmm. Okay, you Sonic. Need a dog just cheese? Yeah, I need yeah. a <laughs> Yeah, dog with like, hot dog cheese? Yeah. I'm not even gonna let him take that. Yeah, I'd definitely <laughs> eat a hot dog with just cheese. <laughs> you'd, eat, you'd pound a dog just cheese, nothing else on it? <laughs> I mean, there's a bunch. Have you ever had it's mac not and cheese be a raw and dog. Just have you ever had mac and cheese and hot dogs? Glazed with cheese. <laughs> 
I mean, I put a yeah. I like bun dog cheese. Right. I'd eat it. <laughs> I would feel slighted if I got one and not the other, you know. You know, yeah. sometimes you gotta make me. that compromise when the fucking chili cheese dispenser at the gas station by your job <laughs> don't want to act right. Oh, so you're speaking from experience. It's not even a hypothetical. Man, <laughs> you're speaking literally. Y'all have, fi- y'all have the seen the glitch in my up. car. It's inside a person, there are two wolves. There's the chili and there's cheese. <laughs> and you gotta, you gotta fuse them together. Gotta do the fusing t- I don't think I've done it ever Shit. with just chili, but uh, so uh, hypothetically. With just chili? <laughs> yeah, the chili is usually the wow, harder, is- the thing that fucks up more consistently because people put a shit ton of chili on their nachos. Are you going to racetrack or quick trip? I just gotta know. Racetrack. Okay, that makes sense. They have the Nathan's hot dogs. They're really good. I, so does Quick Trip. Oh. The one time I got a hot dog from Quick Trip, it was not good. No. Oh, also, why would you go over there, Buffalo hot dog? It's literally a Buffalo chicken hot dog. Oh, I just get the Buffalo sticks. Yeah, that's the, the Buffalo chicken. But I don't chicken. put those on a bun. <laughs> That's the difference. Actually, I have. You put it in a bun with a little bit of the chipotle sauce. Fantastic. Oh, that sounds good. I might give that a go. Okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Chris, what's your number one game of 2021? My number one is Resident Evil Village. (sighs) This fucking game. God, Ethan fucking Winters. What did it do to you, Chris? Man, Dad of the Year really fucking hit. Like, it started off strong. With Lady D, everybody loved her. The whole internet went fucking crazy, and you know it's a good game, or at least you have a good character design. If the whole internet is going crazy over your game, and that was a good part. The sisters were fantastic. The village was had a bunch of lore and like good story behind it. The dollhouse was cursed, and I hate it. And I mean, there were like each each house and each thing went into its own trope of fear, um, and so some things could scare you more. I mean, obviously, the dollhouse was like the one where you're trying to run away from things and you're kind of defenseless and you can't fight back, and so that was why this it was going to be the scariest because it's more supernatural. But like, I do love the fact that it did take into like the four houses of being the four different types of fear and then you got the final boss that was its own also type and the village in itself was another like thing a level of like horror so what capcom was doing was like fantastic as far as an horror aspect um the fact that a lot of that game wasn't spoiled in the marketing which is surprising for capcom because yeah. Capcom will be like, here's the whole fucking Fuck game. It. Here's everything. You want to see every monster you're going to be hunting except for like one or two? Here you go. Right. And then, here's their armor, too. Yeah. And then right. the lore and everything. And like, I know people didn't like Ethan Winters in the Resident Evil 7. I don't know how you didn't like him. I thought he was a great character, but they really fleshed him out and made him more of a human being or more hashtag fungus. relatable yeah i feel like he was just a pair of hands in seven you know yeah i mean he it, made well I, but also like the thing with seven is he made one stupid decision and had the worst night of his life because didn't all of seven happen within like 12 eight eight to 12 hours most of that him being knocked the fuck out yeah it was like i would say it'd be like yeah because hours. you come in there in the afternoon by the time uh, before you, when you get woken up for dinner, it's dark, and when the game ends, it's the next morning. Yeah, so it's like happening. Yeah, so like seven, that was like, just a night. <laughs> seven wasn't written well. It was more of like the feel of the game. Um, they got used to, and I really feel the like they got used the to like yeah. <laughs> oh, you could. I mean, how out. much character development are you actually expecting out of Get Out of Ethan from a game that takes place over eight hours at That's most? True. But, like, there was a point where in the game he literally just says, why does everyone keep dying around me? And then at that point, after, like, someone just, like, a house blew up and, like, this girl you're trying to save dies in your arms, I've, I felt the same way. And he says it, and I'm like, 
fuck, dude, like, I don't know, like, what do we need to do better? Like, I'm just, like, trying to reason with this game character, so it's, like, getting me involved in the emotionally. And so that's why, yeah, game of the year for me is Resident Evil 8 because it really put me through every situation that I had to be in. I felt the stress when it wanted me to feel stressed. I felt absolutely defenseless and scared when it wanted me to. And I felt extremely, not, well, extremely stressed strong but i felt sad and despair when it was trying to do like convey that and also the ending the ending hurt pain it hurts me it's got to be good and like a makes you feel kind of way not in like a masochistic kind of way that's weird chris after hearing you play halo the other day i uh, i don't know (laughs) <laughs> was that the one-liner day yeah apparently i but those aren't the kind of one-liners <laughs> you should watch me hear me when i watch football it's fucked up oh <laughs> yeah okay i mean <laughs> shit <laughs> scary oh, hours Jalen, you're number one <laughs> SMT five. Oh, let's do it. Wait, yep. let's do it. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> yep, it's like he fucking home, man. Got the he homie. He we dropping, home. we dropping unique moves. Like it's, we dropping big deeps. It's hard. It's it's challenging. It's the right challenge. Like you just gotta prepare it. If you're not strong enough, you gotta go grind. You gotta go work for it. You know, Unless up you're some playing new on safety difficulty, Loose. then you just get instantly over leveled from the slightest bit of grinding. And speaking of which, I streamed that, but within the last week, uh, I think I'm going to play the entire game on stream so I can have some guidance as far as like fusions and you know, like strategies on bosses and stuff like that, just so I can play you can, it. You can just literally scroll through the SMT channel. Yeah. And you, you get all the sage advice plus screen caps. Right. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's fun. I'm enjoying the story. Uh, I like the fact that the narrative of this game is centered around me playing the game. Like, mm-hmm. this, is mu- this is about how... These are the events that's happened while I'm ascending to godhood because it's like screw all y'all, I got this. Nice. Like, yeah. The unique moves you get are cool. The open world is fun. It's not too big, but it's like there's stuff hidden in like just when you think, oh, I didn't think I could get up here. You find something. Maybe a little min min for a little glory, or like maybe yeah, you an find, essence you that find you a need way to get up there. Right. Exactly. Or then like, sometimes you, you just you, see a minute and you're like, I'm get getting up there. In there. Right. You come back like 10 hours later, like, ah, ha, ha, I had to go even higher. Right. I had to go above. <laughs> right. It's, it's a lot of fun. And I'm happy that we got a brand new SMT game. It's just a lot of fun. Game of the year for me. Right. Right. So that is also my game of the year. <laughs> gang, gang. <laughs> gang, gang. No, no fucking surprise there. Um, just to piggyback mm-hmm. off what you said, like, <clears throat> before this came out, I was able to kind of, you know, get a chance to play a couple of the other ones. Like, I played um, S&T 4 probably for about three, four hours, something like that. So I kind of got, like a, like, a basic understanding of how it worked. And then mm-hmm. I played SMG three Nocturne, probably for like ten or so hours. I made it up to Matador, essentially, and got my shit pushed in by him. And then you know I said, you know what, my whole team's weak to wind. I got other shit I gotta play, you know. But it was enough for me to get an understanding of the game and how you kind of want to be like, like more rigid in your builds and like, all right, early on you want to know like, do I want to run a magic build? Do I want to run? physical do i want to do i want to jazz it up the, right know. but also if you don't want to think about anything just run a magic build if you want to turn your brain off as much as possible just run a magic build the extra turn conversion just it's too oh, effective it's, it's it's top tier i have every type of magic except for dark but most of my fucking of my demons can do dark damage like i have alice 
I had never have want for darkness, you know. So oh no, I was just dumb. Dumb. I'm leaning into the light and electricity in my um my, uh, in my magic build. It's, you know, it's it's pretty it's pretty stupid. Those those unique moves, like you said, that you get from the Nahabino. Fucking. Cool. Oh man, like I, I'm Best I'm currently. Soundtrack. Soundtrack's good. I'm running a physical build, so I'm like, my fingers turn into a sword. I gotta do it. That game is so good. Do that game is so good. It's, it's, it's real good. Like, just the fact that you're, like, fucking around and demons are up here. And, like, you know, they don't always want to fight. Sometimes they're like, hey, can you help me um, pick up this chick down in the fairy village? Right. And you're like you're going back and forth, and she's like, "Oh yeah, but isn't he a broke nigga?" And he's like, "Damn dog, can you loan me some money for a fuck?" So I gotta I go get, gotta get my, <laughs> gotta get that paper up, right? I'm trying to get my back. Up. It's like, all right, here, like here, here's some, here's some extra maca. I got it on me. You know what I'm saying? Or straight up when um, like when you have that oni, uh, side quest, and they're like, you know, that side oni- quest was hilariously stupid. He's like, yo, Oni's that nigga doesn't help. He robbed me. <laughs> <laughs> he beat me up and stole my stuff. Don't help him. <laughs> you end up having to fight him, and he pushes your shit in a couple times. Because he's an early demon that's resistant to physical. That is bullshit. That is bullshit. And like, shitty. just he's so useful once you get him, though. <laughs> It, it, it's super fun because, like, uh, one of the aspects I enjoyed with Persona is, like, the combat system and, like, fusing and tailoring your demons. And this is, like, that times two, like, scale four with, like, more detail to it. Because, like, you can be really meticulous about how you're fusing your demons and, like, creating builds for them. Like, when I was fusing demons in Persona, I wasn't giving them builds. I was just like, all right, I, I want you to do this type of magic. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. And this shit, I'm like, all right, I need a tank. I need a debuffer. I need somebody who's healing and doing. Right, and that and that changes as you grow in levels. Buffs. Like, yep. the first couple, the first, like, the, you can get past, like, the first two bosses just by have just making sure you have type advantage on your attacks and not getting hit with all this extra but then once you get past wolf boy you're just like oh i need to start doing things properly <laughs> like yeah. yo but then also and this is one of my favorite differences between smt and persona is persona is you and your friends saving the world that's why it has infinite because it's about you and your friends SMT is like, no, 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 no. This is a battle for dominance. You get at max eight, minimum four, minimum two, max eight. Go. Make your move. And I love it. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's it's, it's in that hard vein where with the combat, y'all are, y'all are on, y'all are evenly matched pretty much. This is probably the most in your favor this game has been and you'll still get like you'll still get waxed (laughs) yeah like the game doesn't this isn't the type of game that will unlike smt3 with the first time you get stuck in a mala uh this game doesn't just throw you in a situation you're not prepared for and expects you to deal with it yeah like you have you have healing options you have escape you 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 can literally tell you have recruitment options you can actually recruit like there's not a area that I've been in where it's like you can't recruit demons in. Right. And I think And if you can't, it's because you're too low level and you should probably be somewhere else. Right. And I really fuck with the open world design because it is that marriage of like it's a it's a scaled back version of like the expansiveness of like a Breath of the Wild, but it's like an up risk version of the wild area from Pokemon, uh like Sword and Shield, which is which what is what I really yeah. fuck with. Because, like, you don't necessarily have to fight them unless they, you know, they fucking run at your ass trying to fuck you up. But you If they're even them. or higher, they will come at you. But if they're too, uh, many, too many levels lower, they'll actually do their no, best to get away. out of your way. Fly, no, flying enemies will come at you. Like, I'm level 50, and if I go back to that first area with them little, with them little horse, them little seahorse looking sh- shits that shoot poison darts at you, they will yeah. still run at me. And I'm like, I will oh. obliterate you with my pinky. I like, leave me alone. Yeah, some demons don't give a fuck. And I just think it's really fucking cool. 
and it, they respect your time. So check out SMT5. I'm on a soapbox about it. It's one of the best games that came out this year. Definitely one of the best Last JRPGs. Year. Whatever, same thing. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, and I I hope this you know kind of helps put that put that series like on the map, you know. You know, help get some recency biases on recency bias on its side. You know? Yeah, you know? Yeah, I know. All right, so for me, my honorable mention is Aerial Knights Never Yield. It is not, you know, number one game of the year. I still am missing one trophy from the Platinum, but, you know, it was a great game. I sat down, beat it in one sitting uh, for a single black developer to make, you know, a game put it on everything just want to shut it out it's like a fire yeah, indie shut game out, shut out to Aerial Knight shut out to Aerial Knights never you <laughs> I'm definitely going right. to have to cop that shit at some point and finally sit down and give it that one you know give it a few playthroughs yeah. honestly well I played I technically did like two playthroughs to get every trophy but one that I'm missing for the platinum it's just that one it has teeth alright Chris with your honorable mention uh, my honorable mention is Scott Pilgrim vs. the World just uh, the fun little remake that we all got to try to play together when it worked I mean, we and, could probably go back, and I'm still down to get that in Resident Evil 5. Anytime you say, okay. I will... I can help you with the plat. Because yeah. I, I got the... That was my first plat of the year. That's why part of the reason why it's my honorable mention that we, like, all played together. But I also, like, that was the first plat of 2021. Something that a PlayStation 3 owning me needed. Nice. Well, yeah, Jalen. Uh, my honorable mention is Knockout City. I really did enjoy that game, but it, like out of all the other releases that came out this year, it just didn't stand a chance. Like, yeah, that's fair. But I put too much time and had too much fun in that game not to at least shout it out for what it did. Show us some love, Madrid. <laughs> With your honorable mention? My honorable mention is Guilty Gear Strive. Yeah, that's hey. a game I wanted to shout out when Chris Bucky. said the feel of the game and all of like the, the smell of the game. The smell of the, of the game. game. Fucking banging ass soundtrack. They, they fucking nailed it again with the art and the new character designs. Fucking love it. Um, honestly, the gameplay is pretty awesome. In my opinion, but you know, I'm not like a guilty gear sweaty, and I really haven't played in a uh, several months <laughs> at this point. But I, I do think that game's sick. I love guilty gear. You know, I love everything that they're always cranking out. Um, I'm curious to see how this game kind of grows and progresses. So, you know, I'm a, uh, there. Vikings coming out soon. I'm probably gonna get that that full character pass and get the deluxe edition just so I can get everything. Uh, when she drops, and then that's when I'll get back to it. So excited for okay. that! Mm-hmm. Okay, so my backlog award goes to Spider-Man Miles Morales because I actually beat it in 2021. Uh, great f- follow-up to Spider-Man. Uh, the only thing that when I had the urge to play Spider-Man recently, I didn't go back and play. Miles Morales to work towards the Platinum and instead just started up like a new game plus of Spider-Man Remastered is because the suit selection I feel like is stronger overall in Spider-Man Remastered especially when they keep adding like suits like I mean, with and also like Miles hasn't suits. Miles doesn't have the variety of suits either right so that's that's like I want to say reason. he only has Three, maybe four, at least comic-wise. 
Hmm. Well, I mean, no. he has more of that, more than that in the game. It's just not the same. Like he just doesn't yeah. We don't have, have a bunch of different alternate versions of Miles either to get costumes from. Right. Yeah. Last I Dance, freaking Ghost Spider. But yeah, so that's Miles Morales is my backlog. Chris, what's yours? Um, Ghost of Tsushima. It was uh, the one game that I beat. I beat at the beginning of this year, and that was my second plot of the year. Actually, I started in 2020, but actually beat it this year and went for the gold. And I really do think like this one, Ghost of Tsushima of the PS4 era, is my favorite PlayStation exclusive. Okay. Mm-hmm. Jalen, your backlog award. That goes to Mass Effect Andromeda. Hmm. That game deserved better than what it got. All the criticisms that I, I went back, watched some reviews while I was playing through the game. All, all the criticisms that game got 100% valid still deserves better than what it got. Literally. Like, like it was, the biggest... Yeah. It wasn't saying, broken Chris? as like, people are... St- no, no, no! Like is. that's that's part of the reason. Like it is, it's a better play now oh. than it was on launch. Like I think that might have been all, the only Mass Effect, Effect game I've actually played any of. Yeah. It has the best combat of any Mass Effect game. The builds are fun. The combat's fun. Like having a jetpack and actually having vertical mobility. Like you could see where they got some of their ideas for Anthem. Like, you can see a good chunk of Anthem in Mass Effect Andromeda, except, you know, it's better and it's good in Andromeda. But also, like, I enjoy the tonal difference Mm -hmm. from the original trilogy to this one. Like, the original trilogy, you're what I I thought I was going to be as an adult when I was, like, 15. Shepard's hyper-competent, on their way to a promotion, pretty much strongest human in the galaxy. Mass Effect and drama, you're playing as writer, daddy issues, has an aimbot, and it's how closer to how I actually am in my twenties. Yeah. Nowhere near as competent dealing with nonsense. I feel <laughs> it's like Yeah. So wait, I didn't actually realize that people who made Andromeda made Anthem. Is Anthem is that's officially dead, right? Oh yeah. Okay. No, they literally told the the peop, the Anthem team that was working on trying to improve Anthem and add new content to make the game something worth something. EA said, screw it, just go work on the new Mass Effect game. And they have a new Mass Effect game in the works. That's I mean, that's cool for people who like Mass Effect, but also bad for people who like envisioned Anthem being something good. Oh, yeah. I, I hope the new Mass Effect is good. And like Andromeda deserved better than what it got. Yeah, like I will never not believe that. But on that same notion, mo- a lot of its tech, all the technical criticisms, hundred percent valid. Yeah, some of the tonal stuff, eh? That's more of a flavor thing, you know. But yeah, Madrid. What's your backlog of the? What's your backlog award? Okay, my backlog award is also. My other game of the year <laughs> in Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, <laughs> fourteen right got now, his hooks in you, like right now. It's, it's fourteen spe- specifically. Because, oh yeah, that yeah. Hit. He- Heaven's Word was just like it's fucking awesome. Like from like the dungeons to the trials to like you know just just ki- just kicking it with Astinian and Lady Iceheart. Mm-hmm. <sighs> oh, I mean, man. Heaven's Ward story hit so fucking hard. So fucking hard. Like, you're pissed off, you know what I'm saying? Redacted just got, like, red wedding, do you know, purple wedding, do you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Redacted <laughs> got his shit lopped off, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, mm-hmm. people were pulling the strings. There's a, you get betrayed. People are, your, your teammates, the scions are disappearing left and right, and you don't know what's going on. Not a damn clue. And then, yeah. you, you, before you know it, you see dragoons and they do be jumping. 
they do, do jump to their death mostly, but yes, it they is, do be jumping. It's always the church, and that is the synopsis of Heaven's Word. That is Heaven's Word. The synopsis of Stormblood is Guano. Guano? With yeah. A little bit of, with Guano. a little bit of alabaster mixed in. Yeah. That's fair. So I will give piece. the... Do you get what that's a reference to, Chris? Guano? Yeah. Well, I know what that is. No, Guano. Oh, no, I don't know what that... I thought you were talking about bad shit. And I was like... <laughs> no, it's from Solo Part. Oh, uh, mm-mm. No. I thought you were calling Stormblood bat shit, and I was like, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but you got me. <laughs> but yeah, good old, good old One Piece. That's all, that's, all Sto- that's all Stormblood is. And I'm like, I'm chopping at the bit to get into Shadowbringers and then to inevitably make it to Endwalker so I can finally be free of this fucking game. Um, you won't be free. <laughs> I know I'm going to be free. Be, beat but, the game before Christmas. But I won't have a <laughs> less mighty of a need to know, you know? I want to know. I want to know. Yeah. So, you yeah, got to get to Ann Walker. You got to get there. Exactly. But 14 is definitely, like, that is the most that I want to be into a metaverse. Like, that's that's about it, you know? But you can miss me with all that other shit unless we're dueling. Um, I did say I would go for some Yu-Gi-Oh!, but like, that's just really good. Like, if you if you somebody who loves MMOs or you love Final Fantasy, this it this for you. Mm-hmm. That's it. If you like if you like role play, <laughs> there's also <laughs> that's also a thing. That's that's also a viable option. <laughs> that's in the meta, and the servers seem to have been switched back to normal. I've been able to yeah. load in. To Cues the don't mesh suck. Without it sucking. So, aren't they selling it again? Are they? They don't need to. Has, has that happened yet? Everybody already owns the game. Well, actually, no. Uh, they will start selling it on the 25th, I believe. So, by the time this podcast is out, they'll be selling it again. Apparently, the free trial Next also Tuesday. doesn't come back on that date. Which I thought it did originally, so that's good. They're probably like for people who. Nah. Let's see if we can make some more money first. <laughs> we tried to get this damn thing away for free, but you won't buy it. Yeah. All right. So, so I mean, I guess that wraps game of the year, twenty twenty one. Mm hmm. There are a couple really well there's one really big story that I want to talk about because we can't go a week without talking about this oh, story you mean and one fucking gigaton of a story right massive attack levels of just of a story mm-hmm. motherfucker just overload so Microsoft is in the process of purchasing Activision Blizzard God damn. To the tune of seventy billion dollars. It's crazy, crazy. You know, like we were talking about Activision Blizzard repeatedly for all the stuff going on and mm-hmm. Microsoft right before this said that they were evaluating how they were going that to be is my doing favorite, business. That's my favorite yeah. quote. Like we we want to <laughs> reevaluate how we're going to conduct business with them. It's like, no, we, we about to buy these motherfuckers. No, no, that's how, that's what the reevaluation was. They're like, they're weak enough. We could just buy them real quick. Just, just, just completely like sh- strip out, well, strip out management once they finally have it. Cause remember if this deal actually goes through, it won't go right. through till next year. Yeah. No, 2023. <laughs> so like there's, there's a chance Blizzard could even, Destroy itself even more. Well, I mean, yeah, I don't foresee. The interesting thing about this is we saw how they did it with Bethesda, where we got Skyrim and we got um, <clears throat> Deathloop and Ghostwire. Mm. I'm wondering, do we get Overwatch Two on PlayStation? Do we get Diablo Four? No, on no, no. It's do we get Overwatch Two at all? 
Yeah, I think like, that I, I, Microsoft will be like, all right, he, we're going to make this happen. Here's what I, I don't really know, because they've been Microsoft pretty hands off with the other companies they bought, though. Yeah. They haven't been yeah, really that they, hands. But then those other companies aren't Blizzard, but. Yeah. There's definitely some things that need to take place behind the scenes first, like with removing a lot of the, <laughs> a lot of those pieces that are currently in play. Right. Yeah, the, and I think the for CEO. yeah, I really do think for <laughs> Xbox sake, they're not to gonna start. keep him there. No, they're. Yeah. I'm. I'm a thousand percent sure they're not. Yeah, that doesn't mean he's not gonna get paid off of this whole thing, which is you know another. Which would be fucked, but no, he is though. I know. Yeah, he's. I'm you know he got a golden have, parachute. You know he, he got a golden, golden parachute. parachute and another golden parachute for his diamond encrusted horse. Right? Didn't like didn't like didn't a thousand people get laid off so Mans could get a raise? Yes. And there's Raven is currently year. protesting. Yeah, I was about to say there's a that. team still protesting because of Raven. That. Like, Here's what all they I all want. Strike. I want Microsoft to go to Activision and Blizzard and King and say, "We're bringing back NeverSoft. Who's in?" And then, <laughs> like, make <laughs> NeverSoft. <always hard. laughs> make NeverSoft a brand again. Make NeverSoft games again. Like. The thing I really want to see, I want to see, like, those other teams that got sucked into the Call of Duty Gulag, like, be pulled out. Yes. Like, Ravensoft, like, Beanox, free, I'm still, Raven, like, free Raven. I mean, just... Raven, but also my thing Beanox, about it, though, is part of... For Bob, part, yeah, but also part of my thing about it is, I don't know... For the ones who still have a lot of their original crew from the buyout, save those. The ones who don't... You could strip those names, make something new, because at this point, it is just a name. The yeah. people who made it magical are gone. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, even just lifting out the studios that got pulled in, because Infinity Ward, Treyarch, Sledgehammer, we know that those are, like, the Call helms of, of Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. Huh? And Raven. But all I'm going to list the studios that got sucked into the gulag that no, need to just Raven. Kind of be free. No, Raven it's got they not make, just Raven. I it's know. I'm, Raven, no, I'm saying make Beanox. sure Raven gets in that list. I'm saying make Raven sure Raven's on that list. Raven's on the in the list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Raven, number one on the list. Everybody. Cool, cool. We're good. Make we're it, good. As, for laying that down. <laughs> Beanox, High Moon. Toys for Bob, Vicarious Visions. We need all of these studios that got dismantled by Activision to... Because think about it. Now they own Banjo-Kazooie, Crash, and Spyro. I could go for a new Spyro. That's good. We need we need a crossover with the three of them, and they're just like, this is the biggest crossover do, 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 since do, 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 do. since the saying? Game Boy Color version of I need like, Doom, Crash. Doom they with do a Master Cry Chief in it. Wasn't that a game? What? The crossover of Crash Bandicoot and Spyro on a Game yeah, Boy Color. Yes, uh, you're thinking purple. of orange and purple for the... D for the yeah. Game Boy Advance. GBA, I oh have yeah, there we go. We talked about this on an episode like probably two hundred episodes ago. Probably. And that episode Maybe made me buy this cartridge. So let me. Oh, was it in the studio? The old old studio. Yeah, we were. I right have no idea when this episode. City. I ne I never played that game, but I heard it was. It There's was probably bad. a reason for that. <laughs> yeah, I heard it was not good. I actually can't find my copy of it. Oh, there it is. So, it's so blurry. <laughs> maybe, maybe I will actually play the new Diablo now. Maybe, just maybe. No, no. no. I think no. Microsoft no. will put no. the right kind no. of juice behind these games. No, no. I mean, I'm going to tell you this right now. If I'm going to tell you this right now. If you want to play Diablo guilt-free, just play Path of Exile. They're making a sequel because of how bloated the original game is. Like, yeah. Uh, just play some PoE. 
I am excited to see what I mean, like to see a Call of Duty that is more creative. Maybe they do tell people who make Call of Duty like we're not going to do it every year. We're going to do it every other year. We're going to like let's really be creative about what the fuck we're doing. Like bring well, I mean, some creativity back to video it's games gonna and Activision suck. Blizzard. Because Raven is leading on Warzone, and I think Warzone is such a cash cow for them right now, and it's one of those things that's going to Raven's persist. the one doing the walkout right now, too. Yeah, because... Over the QA firing. Right. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, it sucks because I could see Toys for Bob working on a project in the near future. I could see Vicarious yeah. Visions working on a project in the near future. Raven is going to stay on Warzone duty and because Warzone, you don't buy Activision Blizzard and shut down World of Warcraft and fucking Warzone. Right. Is World of Warcraft I'm, worth but, keeping? Uh, no. Warcraft's not worth keeping. Uh, fucking... Warcraft just needs a straight sequel. Like, they, yeah. that, that neat game needs to basically be remade from the ground up. If you're... We're being 100, Shadowlands was the perfect opportunity of it since every single playable character went to the fucking afterlife. Literally, just leave them there. Start, start the world 10 years after that. Let us rock. But... So, Warcraft's not worth keeping... Warzone is only worth keeping because fucking Vanguard was so bad. Like, people, nobody adopted is, Vanguard. Warzone I mean, has Warzone's persisted been, been for three prop- Call of Duties now. Yeah, I've been and pretty each, popular for And that's a while. my point, though. That's my point, though, is that I feel like Warzone is, the, is a cash cow more so because of how bad the other ones are. It's kind of like battle, the new Battlefield. Battlefield 5 has resurrected itself was it five or was it four five well five yeah. and four battlefield five and four resurrected from the dead because the new one is so bad which sucks because it was gonna be so good but i mean i don't know if you can was compare it, be so good? it looked like it was promising uh it could have been good i just i don't know if you can compare uh war zone with the res- like a regular call of duty game because it is like a part of the juggernaut that is battle royales the ba- I feel like the Battle Royale popular. genre is starting to fall off, though. At this right. point, the, the people who are still playing Battle Royale around. games are playing the very specific Battle right. Royale game, game that they like. And the I think Battle most Royale of those game, ones are on the way out. The only yeah. one that's going to be worth a damn is the My Hero Battle Royale game. That's <laughs> Oh, my God. No, that's not going to be worth a damn because if you don't have mobility, if you got a hero with no mobility, you're fucked. That's just the way that game's gonna be. Maybe they mean yeah. they're that gonna game, make uh, you Shinobi playing Strikers that game type. means you're fucked. That's what that game's gonna be. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they just didn't make it an MMO where we get to design our own heroes, like a little DC that Universe Online type of thing in the My Hero cool. Universe. Because that would have been fun. DC Universe Online exists. Yeah, so DC Universe. So it's not even. It wasn't even the best. DC Universe Online wasn't even the best superhero MMO. That went to City of Heroes and City of Villains. That game. Those games were fun. Oh, I missed. Rip, rip those games. Those were. I don't know. City My of Heroes Warrior and City of Villains. Light those were a superhero. We're You're also a mech pilot. More than a superhero now at this point. Yeah. Just All saying. Right. So yeah, I mean, Microsoft buying Activision, it is one of the biggest mergers in video games like ever. Mm-hmm. Which is weird because well, not weird. It's hilarious because decade a decade ago, one of the biggest mergers was the Activision Blizzard merger. Then the next then yeah. one of the biggest ones that was like redefining gaming was when Microsoft bought Bethesda. Yeah. Now they're re And now we're games. and now Microsoft is back at it again. Yeah, I mean Microsoft is like on the offensive and the thing is like It's about infrastructure. Mm-hmm. That's what so much of so much of everything has been pass. lately. It's yeah. about adding value to Game Pass. That, yep. No, that's the thing about it is that Game Pass is the infrastructure for Xbox gaming. Yeah, and it's fucking fantastic. Like, and it's right. It's it so just good. works so seamlessly. Just 
turn a thing on and you just got games to go. I, I mean, the cloud game? gaming off of the system works really well too. So some of the games you don't even download. Like I literally uh, over my lunch at work on a shittiest laptop I probably ever worked with played Halo Infinite just with cloud screaming because the internet's so good it was f- seamless on a fucked up laptop. I was like, cool. This is a good time. Right? Like, Xbox Game Pass is just great. It's worth the money. And then every couple of weeks, it just becomes even more worth the money. Like, yep. heck, that was the reason why I played Mass Effect Andromeda. I was like, I could go for some more Mass Effect. Didn't feel like finishing three. Andromeda was on Game Pass. I'm like, let's go. Yeah. I would not have played it if it wasn't on Game Pass. I've said that sentence a lot. Wouldn't have yeah, no, you're going to hear that a lot out of me coming soon. Like, heck, I booted up Sable for that very reason. Like. Okay. Well, I mean, does anybody have a one more thing? Uh, Sony got rid of start selling PlayStation Now cards, so we might actually get the uh, their version of Game Pass sooner than expected. Yeah. Right. They, well, they only stopped selling them in Europe specifically. Wow. Like, you can still buy one through Amazon. You can still go into a GameStop. And, like, there's still a lot. There was one retailer in Europe that they full stopped. <laughs> like, completely just removed the ability to buy cards from that one retailer. But, right. I you mean, know, it's the first step. Are, how many people are buying a PlayStation Now card? More than you'd think. It's actually surprising. If it's more than 30, that's more than I'd think. (laughs) It does more than Stadia. More people use PlayStation now than Stadia. I'm talking about just buying the card specifically, because can't you just, like, put your card on the file and just... Yeah, you can just kind of do the subscription through PlayStation. It seems incredibly niche to me. But maybe, I don't know. Maybe that's the best way to do it, since you don't have to worry about auto renewal. Yeah. That's true. I mean, that's still how I do my Final Fantasy game time. I mean, Final Fantasy is is, is guaranteed, brother. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I mean, if nobody else has one more thing, remember you can follow us all collectively around the internet, cheesycontrollerpodcast.com. Follow me on Twitter at Anton6. I've been streaming more on my Twitch, trying to get back into streaming, been having some fun with it lately. Uh, Chris, where can people find you? At Chef and Chris. Jalen. Squid Bishop. Madrid. Speedwagon X. All right, this has been a Noah's Good production. The audio version is edited by I Know Jones. The video version is edited by Lawn and Twisted Mind. Until next time, 